Hello, welcome on Darasa Online. Um, my name is Mwalim Kileo Abubakar uh, from Baobab Secondary School. Uh, today we are going to see, I mean, to learn on topographical map interpretation. Uh, our map, in, I mean, this is our topic. Our topic will be topographical map interpretation. Uh, the subtopic will be map orientation based on position, and we will focus on what we call bearing. <coughs> uh, please stay at home, wash your hands as often as possible. Okay, let's go back to academic point of issue. Uh, today we are going, as I said, we are going to discuss on topographical map interpretation uh, based on method of showing position, or we call map orientation based on what? On position. And we, are talk we are going to speak here to talk more on what? On bearing. So, <coughs> what is bearing? What are the type of bearing? Uh, so, let me give you a simple explanation of these issues. It means we are going to discuss on what is bearing. Bearing, I know you know what is bearing. Type of bearing. Type of bearing. Then we are going to see on what we call true north. And right here we will see on, on type of bearing, we are going to see some of the cal calculation involved bearings. Uh, thereafter, we'll see what are the true north, the magnetic north. We'll see also what we call the, the grid north. Later on, we'll go and discuss on some of the very important issues regarding bearings, especially in the Form 6 and the Form 5 students who take geography. Right here, we'll focus more on what we call the magnetic bearing. Magnetic bearing, the magnetic variation. We we'll see its definition, how to calculate, that, calculate them. We we'll see how to calculate the true bearing. So, what is bearing? Bearing refers to the angle in degree, means or seconds that you to show the position or location of a point or an area. <coughs> Example: the position of point A from point B is 20, 20 degree northeast. 200 meters. So you can see the position of point A from point B. It means right now we have been able or we are able to identify the position of point A from point B by using bearing. How? Because we are told the position of point A from point B is 20 degree. So I'm talking about this one. 20 degree. It means this one is very important. 20 degree, it means this it is a bearing of point A from point B. That's why I say bearing we refer to the angle in either degree, minute, or second that is used to show the position of what? Of a point or an area. We have two types of bearings. We have the forward bearing and the backward bearing. So what is forward bearing? What is backward bearing? Forward bearing refers to the angle measured from the observer position to the object. Or you can say refer to the angle measured from, from the known to unknown point. Listen very careful. Forward bearing will refer to the angle measured from the observer position, we call it the known point, to the object, to the unknown point. For instance, maybe you are asked to go to somewhere else. So the surveyor may stand maybe in this point, and may take the angle from where the surveyor is standing to the unknown point. So the angle measured from the known point to unknown point, we call it the, the forward bearing. And the opposite of it, we call it the what? The back bearing. That is, back bearing refers to the bearing or angle measured from the object to the observer. Or in other way, we can say uh, the backward bearing will refer to the angle measured from the unknown point to, to the known point. As I said, the surveyor is right here at this point and is measured the angle to, toward a certain point. It means, but the opposite of it, it means someone will go to the unknown point and measure back the angle from the unknown to the observer's position. That angle from unknown. To the observer position, we call it what? We call it the backward bearing. Okay, let's see a simple example right here. Uh, example, measure the bearing of point A <coughs> from point B and identify which point is forward and which point is backward bearing. So, <coughs> it's a simple example, very simple example. Measure the bearings of point A from point B and identify which point is forward bearing and which point is what? Is backward bearing. So, First, I mean, we, we have the, some procedures, very simple procedure. It means first we have to identify where is point A and where is point B. So you can use either the grid reference point, a place name, if maybe you have given me this is point A or this is point B, or you can use the grid reference point in case you have given um, uh, 
point A is in this degree difference point and point B is in this degree difference point, okay? So let's say uh, <coughs> we have point A somewhere because the first procedure is to identify where is point A and where is point B. You know, it means, let's assume this is point A. See, you're on the map. Let's assume this is point A and this one right here is point B. So that is the first procedure. It means you have to identify where is point A and where is point B. The second procedure is that you have to join the two point A and B by using the straight line. It means we have to join the two point by using the straight line. That is the second procedure. The third procedure it means you have to draw the four cardinal points in each point, in point A and point B. We have to draw the four cardinal points. It means we are going to draw the four cardinal points. This is my four cardinal point at point A. And this is four cardinal point at what? At point B. Make sure the, the cardinal point is they are drawing, um, or you can you, you draw it perpendicular to point e, to point to this point, to each point. Make sure this cardinal point is perpendicular to each point. Thereafter, the third procedure, I mean the last procedure is that you have to measure the angle from A to B. So we go back to the question. Measure the bearing, measure the bearing of point A from point B. It means you start from point B. So, right here, it means we will measure the bearing of point A from B, from point B. It means we will measure the bearing of point A from point B. So, it means from there, maybe, let's assume this is, it is uh, maybe 315 degree. Okay, so uh, from now, from here, you can be able to identify the position of point A from point B, which means the position of point A is this one from point B. Is it 315 degrees from point, e, from point B? So know where the position of point A from point B. And identify which point is forward and which point is what? Is backward bearing. So from here, I know the first point to be measured or to be measured is this one. Is what we call the forward bearing. And the second point to be measured after the first one, this one we call the, the backward bearing. So this one will be the, the forward what? The forward bearing. And this one will be the what? the backward bearing. So let's say maybe uh, we have um, uh, what? It means because we have, I mean, you take the protector, you measure this point, you'll get 315 degree. Then to get the, the, the angle A, I mean the bearing of angle A, you, you can take the simple mathematics. For instance, maybe this one. Forward bearing plus or minus 180 degree is equal to back bearing. And right now we want our back bearing because right now we have already calculated the, this position and we have assumed that it is, it is 315 degrees. So to get the back bearing, it means we substitute the value of forward bearing. So we take this one, 315 degree minus 180 degrees equal to what? To back bearing. bearing. I know this is simple and I know you know it. So you take the, um, you subtract this one minus this one, which will give you how much? Bearing is equal to 135 degree. So from there, because the question asks you to, to measure the bearing of point A from point B. You see, so the bearing of point A from point B is this one. The bearing, the bearing of point A from point B is that one is this one. Okay, uh, we have seen the simple question uh, which involve bearings, I mean forward bearing, then forward and backward bearing. Then let's see um, some of the new concepts uh, based on, be on bearings. So we have the true north, magnetic north, as well as the what? The grid north. So you have to listen to me very careful on this uh, three concept right here because after this one we will talk about the magnetic bearing, magnetic variation as well as the true bearing. Those are angles between these three lines right here. So before understanding the angle it means you have to understand the, the line. I repeat it. You have to understand very clear this line, three line, what are the magnetic north, what are the true north as well as what are the grid north. Before understanding the angle between this line do you understand? Then from there, I mean, from there, let's see what is true north, what is magnetic north, what is grid north. So, let's assume <coughs> I am the observer position and I have hold what we call the magnetic needle, you see, toward a certain position. It means this is observer position, you hold it, the magnetic needle, toward a certain position. So, 
there are three lines that we act will act according to your uh, magnetic needle we have the magnetic field see this one in case we have the magnetic material it means we affect my magnetic compass it means there will be a line that you cannot see going northward toward the magnetic material and we call it what the magnetic north also we have the lines i mean from your uh, magnetic uh, needle going uh, northward you see you cannot see that line we call the line of sight because it's uh, from the observer position northward we call it what the true north we also have another line we call it the the grid north line Th these are the lines of sights from the observer position northward similar to to magnetic what to magnetic north so by reading the definition the true north refers to the line of sight the line which you cannot see from the <coughs> i mean uh, the line of sight of what of north direction this one the line of sight of north direction from the observer position northward as you can see from the ob observer position what northward then we have the magnetic north as i said refer to the line of sight of magnetic field from the observer position this point going northward but to the direction of what of the metal material because remember you know, right now the metal material are the ones that will affect the what the magnetic compass then from there we have the grid north grid north refer to the line of sight of what of grid lines from the observer position northward is this one okay then from there we will discuss the angle or bearings formed between each lines okay let's see uh, some of the angles the magnetic <coughs> bearing will refer to the angle between the line of sight of magnetic north and the horizontal line from the observer position to the object so we are talking about this angle right here this angle is what calls the magnetic what the magnetic bearing because i say magnetic bearing refer to the angle between the line of sight of what of the magnetic north this one and the horizontal line from the observer position to the object this horizontal line from the observer position to to the what to the object so the angle between the two lines we call it the magnetic what the magnetic bearing then we go to the <coughs> another angle we call it the true bearing so the true bearing refer to the angle between the line of sight of true north and the horizontal line from the observer position to the object so we come this is our true north line then we have the horizontal line from the from the observer position to the to what to the object it means <coughs> the angle between the true north and the horizontal line this one from observer position to the object we call it what the true bearing that's why the true bearing as the definition says refer to the angle between the line of sights of what of true north this one and the horizontal line from the observer position, the horizontal line from the observer position to the object. Between the horizontal line from the observer position to what? To the object. Then we have the what we call the magnetic variation. So the word variation it means we refer to the differences. So we refer to the angle of the difference between the true bearing and the magnetic bearing. So if you take the difference of these two angles, the true bearing and the magnetic bearing, it means we get another angle, we call it the magnetic variation. So the magnetic variation, it means it is the angle of the differences between the true bearing and what is the magnetic bearing. As you can see, we have this angle right here, the large one we call the magnetic bearing. We have this angle, we call the true bearing. So to get this angle, I repeat, to get this angle, you can take this one minus this one. To get the magnetic variation or sometime you may take this angle plus another angle to get what we call the magnetic variation that's why the angle of the difference that's why i write the angle of what of the difference this one between the true bearing and the magnetic bearing we call it the what the magnetic variation then from there let's see the simple example on how to calculate and identify angle between these two i mean these three lines right here the true bearing grid north and the, the magnetic north and normally we, we 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 can calculate the angle between these two lines the true north and the magnetic north with respect to the horizontal line from the observer position to the object okay uh as i've said that we have angle between these three lines with respect to, or in relationship to the horizontal line from the observer position to the object so uh let's see some simple example like this one sometimes you may be asked to find the value of angle x for instance and you have gi been given angle between these three lines. So <coughs> let us identify which angle are those between those lines and what is the value of angle X and we have to identify what is angle X. So simple, as I said earlier, uh, we have the angle between the magnetic north and the horizontal line from the observer position to the object. This angle right here, we call it what? The magnetic bearing. So if you write that down, or the givens, it means the 
magnetic, I mean the givens, or data given, we have the magnetic bearing as this one, 20 degree, 20 minutes. Then it, <coughs> I said we have angle between the true north line, this one, and the horizontal line from the observer position to the object. This angle right here we call the true bearing. So we have the true bearing. True bearing is 80 degree, 15 minutes. And then it, we were asked to find the value of angle X, this one. The value of angle X, it means right now we don't know what is X. So X is required in terms of its value and we have to identify it. What is angle X? So uh, going there, as you can see, this is true, be I mean magnetic bearing, this is true bearing. Then we have the angle of the difference. The angle of the difference between the true bearing and the magnetic bearing, we call it the magnetic variation. So from there, we have already identified what is angle X. It means angle X, right here, angle X is equal to magnetic, magnetic variation. So going to, I mean, to the calculation, we can be able to find the value of angle X or the value of magnetic variation. It means magnetic variation from our, our figure there, Magnetic variation, in order to, to, to find the value of this angle X, we can take this angle minus this angle in order to get the value of this angle. Why? Because if we take this angle plus this angle, we get the total angle, the large one. So, in order to find angle X, which is magnetic variation, we take this one, the magnetic bearing minus the small, small angle, this one. Magne I mean, the true what? The true bearing. So, the magnetic variation will be equal to this one, which is 20 degree, uh, 20 minutes, minus that one, uh, 80 degree, 15 what? 15 minutes. So if we minus there, you get 5 minutes, uh, 12 degrees. This is the value of angle X, which is what? Which is equal to magnetic variation. Simple as that one. So sometimes, <coughs> by summarizing, you can be given a, the lines, the true north, the magnetic north and the grid north with respect to the horizontal line from the observer position to the object and we may be asked to find the angle. So you have to be very careful in understanding the, the, the figure. You have to understand what is magnetic north, true north uh, and the grid north and you have to understand well the angle formed between the three lines. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, <coughs> we have seen uh, the first example. Let's go to the second example. Uh, example, calculate the value of angle A and identify it. You can see uh, the figure right here. Uh, we have the angle between these two lines, magnetic north and the true north. And we have the large angle, this one, between the magnetic north and the horizontal line uh, from the observer position to the object. And we have this angle right here. You see, between the true north and the what? And the horizontal line from the observer position to the, to the object. Now we are asked to find the value of angle A and we have to identify what is the angle A. So from our diagram there, we have to write the givens as the proof we ask. It means the givens are, we have the angle, this one, the angle between the magnetic north and the horizontal line from the observer position to the object, we call it what? The magnetic bearing, which is given by 20 degree, five minutes. Then we have this angle right here. The angle between the true north and the horizontal line from the observer position to the object, we call it the true bearing. It means we have the true bearing there, which is uh, angle A. This one is required. This is the one we are supposed to find. And then we have the, this angle, the angle between the true north, I mean the magnetic north, and the, the true north. The angle between the magnetic north and the true north, or the angle between the, yeah, the angle between the difference of these two lines, we call it the what? The magnetic, I mean, the magnetic variation. So, angle between the magnetic north and the true north, we call it magnetic variation. So, we have the magnetic variation is 0, 60 degree, I mean, the 66 six degree, 20 minutes. So, <coughs> by observing clear or by looking at the figure given right here, we can be able to identify the value of angle X, and we can be able to know what is the angle X. So, it's, it's simple mathematics because the large angle is 20 degree, 5 minutes, and this angle right here is 60 degree, uh, 20 minutes. So we've given angle A, <coughs> and we, are, we were asked to find the value of angle A, and we have to identify it to tell what is angle A. So from there, uh, it's easy. 
because we have this uh, data as I, I've written right here, we have the magnetic bearing, the true bearing, the magnetic variation. So we are supposed, oh, we are needed to find the value of angle A and identify what is angle, is angle A. So from here, we have already identified what is the angle A. Angle A is what? Is the true bearing. So we need to find the value of the true bearing. So by looking or observing carefully in this uh, figure right here, we have this one, the large angle, which is 20 degree, 5 minutes. And we have this one, and we have this one. So to get the value of angle A, we can take the large angle minus this one in order to get this one. Are we together? It means we need the value of angle A, which is true bearing, because I said the true bearing refers to the line of sight from the, I mean between the true north, the line of sight of true north, and the horizontal line from the observer position to the object. So right now we are supposed to find the value of angle, angle A, which is what? Which is true bearing. So true bearing from there, from the diagram. It means we have to take the magnetic bearing, the large one, minus the magnetic variation. You see? So true bearing is equal to 20 degree, 5 minutes, minus the magnetic variation. 0, 6 degree, I mean the 6 degree, 20 minutes. So <coughs> coming to this side it means uh, we have to drink 20 degree, 5 minutes, minus uh, 60 degree, 20 minutes. So careful right here. It means we have 5 minutes minus 20 minutes. So remember, 5 minutes cannot subtract 20 minutes. So we have to take 1 degree right here. So remember, 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes. So we take 1 degree... We add here 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes, so plus 5 is equal to 65 minutes. So 65 minutes minus 20, it means we get 45. 45 what? Minutes. Then right here we have uh, uh, 19, 19 degree. 19 degree minus 60 degree, it means we get 13 what? 13 degree. So it means the value of, the value of um, true bearing is equal to 13 degree 45 what? Minutes. That's how it's easy, or that's how uh, if you were given uh, this kind of question, you may be able to find the other value of a given or ask the angle. Okay, uh, let's go back. We have seen some of the questions uh, based on bearings. We have seen uh, what is magnetic bearing, what is true bearing, what is magnetic variation. So let us uh, look on another question which is very important and this question is, is an example of the competent questions. So let's see how to calculate it. We have the question right here. Um, it's written right here. Um, I'm sure you, you, can, you can read it. So we have to read it together so that we can write that down or the given down. The magnetic variation of town X <coughs> is at July 2010 or this one. So if I'm going to write down the data, it means we have the magnetic variation, this one. And then we have the times given. So it means I have the time, I have the magnetic variation. So I will write it. The magnetic variation is given. It means given. It means we have the magnetic variation, that one. Uh, 80 degree 45 minutes, it means 80 degree 45 minute west. <coughs> and they, they told us the magnetic variation of town X is at July 2010 was, it means we have the time given. So we have time given which is July 2010. Let's go back to the, to the, to the question. While, while its magnetic bearing was this one, east, the magnetic bearing, it means that's another data given or provided. It means we have the magnetic bearing is um, <coughs> this one, 100 degree, 20 minute, 100 degree, 20 minute, 15 second, east. See? Then from there, <coughs> the question continues. If the change in position of town X in one year is four minutes positively, 
So it stays there. If the position of town X after one year, it increased by four minutes. In other way, we say the position of town X after one year, it increased by four minutes. Why I say increase? Because there is a word right here. This word is very important. Because it's given as positive, it means we increase. I mean, the position of town X was increasing. Or sometimes they may say uh, uh, the position of town X after one year was this minutes wasted. So if you see the word waste there, or increasing or positively, it means uh, the position was increasing, okay? Sometimes they may change. <clears throat> the position of town X in one or after one year may be four minutes negatively. So it means if it is negative, in other way we call it, it the position of town X was decreasing. Or in the other way, you, they write the four minutes maybe east. So if you see east, it means it's decreasing. Or they may go direct either negative or decreasing. So I repeat, this word right here, it is very, very important because uh, in our formula there, we may either add or minus by considering this word after the word minutes or after either the, I mean, the, after the change in annual, I mean, the position up after the change of the position of a certain town in a given year, it may either increase or decreasing. So this word right here is very important because in our formula, it is the one that it may help either to increase or, I mean, to add or to subtract. You'll see there. <coughs> so let us write the data down that the position of town X after one year is four minutes positive. How am I going to write? I write the change in annual. It means annual means one year. The change in annual was given there. Four minutes positively. You write here. Positively. This one is very important. So let's go to the questions. <coughs> let's go to the questions. Calculate the magnetic variation is at December this one. It means at the first time we were given the magnetic variation was this one. We were given time July 2010. We have also the magnetic bearing is this one. But right now calculate the magnetic variation. It means we have the magnetic variation and we are asked to calculate another magnetic variation. It means we are going to label it. the first one we may write it all the magnetic variation or the mag mag magnetic variation one. This one. We call it magnetic variation one. Why? Because we have another, we are, we are asked to find another magnetic variation. So we call it the first magnetic variation and we write it magnetic variation one. So it means calculate the magnetic variation. Is that December? It means they need us to calculate the second magnetic variation. This is required. Time two. Is that December? It means Time two. Why time two? Because we have the first time given. This is time one. Then we were, we were given another time. It means this is time two. December 2020. After that, we have calculated the magnetic bearing. Is that December also? 2020. It means we have the first or the given magnetic bearing. So we label it as the first magnetic bearing. Now they ask us to, or they ask us to, they need us to calculate the second magnetic bearing is at December. So we label it the magnetic bearing, the second one. This is required. Is at December 2020. So we have the second, I mean the same time. So we have time one right here. We have time two there. We have the magnetic variation right here, which is the first or the, uh, yeah, the old magnetic variation. Then they ask us to find the new magnetic variation. We have the first magnetic bearing. Then they ask us to find the second or the new magnetic what? bearings. I mean, let's go uh, on the formula. We have the formula, the formula for calculating this kind of questions. For instance, we have uh, this formula right here. This is the first formula for calculating <coughs> what we call the magnetic variation. So we have the new, I mean, in order to find the second or the new magnetic variation, we have to take the first magnetic variation, this one, plus or minus, uh, plus or minus the product of change in time and change in annual. So we have to take change in time times change in annual. <coughs> Remember, we have the change in annual, which is four, four minutes, and we have the 
change in time. Change in time, it means time 2 minus time 1. And from the given data, we have time 2, which is time 2, remember, time 2 is uh, December 2020. Minus time 1. Time 1, it is July 2010. It means from there, we will take this one. This one minus this one, 10 years. Then if you take December minus July, remember December is 12, then July is what, is, five, is, is 7, you get 12 minus 7, you get 5 months. 5 months. So remember, change in time right here, time 2 minus time 1, it should be either in years or in months. So we have to change these months into years. We divide by how much? By 12. If we divide this one by 12, it means we have already changed it this month into, into years. Then we plus 10 years to get the total change in time. Total change in time, it means we take 10 years plus the change in what? In months, which is in years right now. So this one, divide by this one, you'll get uh, is equal to 0 0.42 years plus 10 years. You'll get 10.42 what? Years. So we go back there. We take this one, 10.42 years times. Change in what? Change in annual. So we have given there, change in annual is four minutes. So we take this one minus this. I mean, this one times this one. So the issue is, this time is in years, and this uh, degree, I mean, the, 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 the position of town X after one year, it, was given, it is given in what? In minutes. So how uh, will it going to be? Will it going to be in years or in minutes? So we go back there from the question. If you read carefully the question, the question said the position of town X after one year is four minutes. So after one year, so you say one year is equal to four minutes. How about these years right here? How about 10.42 years? So you, you put here, four point, I mean 10.42 years will give you how many minutes? You see? So this years and this years will cancel. So you take it, this one times four. And the product of this one will be in what? In minutes. So you take 10.42 times four minutes. Which will give, I mean, will be equal to uh, 40, how much? 41.68 what? Minutes. You see? Then you have to change this one into minutes and what? And seconds. This one is equal to 41 minutes plus 0 0.68 minutes. It is the same meaning because if you take this one plus this one, it become, I mean, it comes the same to, I mean, it will be the same with this one. So you have to change this one 0 0.68 into, into second. It means we have to times by how, many, how much? By 60. So you'll get 41 minutes. This one times this one, you get 40.8, which is equal to 41 seconds. 41 seconds. So the product of change in time and change in annual is equal to this one. 41 uh, minutes, uh, 41 seconds. So, <clears throat> because we have the product of change in time and change in annual, right now we go back for, to our formula. In order to find the, mag the second magnetic variation, it means we have to take the first magnetic variation plus or minus this product of change in time and change in the annual. So we have this one, the value of this one we have, which is 41 degree, the value of this one, which is 41 degree, 41 what? Second. So we have to plus or minus this one. So how are we going to use the two signs? I said earlier that we may use plus, you have to be very careful there. We may use plus, or we can use plus if the if the the position of town X after one year after one year was either positive, or you may see the words this one increase, or you may see the word east. After the word the if the annual change was this one, or the position of town X was this one, then you may see either positive. You may use the sign, or you may see the word increase, or you may see the word waste. Or, sometimes you may use this one, the negative one. If you see the following words, A is a negative, as negative, or decrease, or the word what? Is T. I think we are together. In our formula, in order to know, am I going to either use either minus, 
or the negative sign. I may use plus by looking at this well right here. Or you may use minus by considering or looking at the either after the word. If the position of town X was this one, it's either negative, decrease, or east, you may use what? The minus. Or after the word, if the position of town X was say positive, you may use this one. Increase, you may use this one. Or west, you may use the signs. So from our formula right here, it's right now, I mean, right now it's very simple. We can be able to find the, uh, I mean, the value of uh, new magnetic variation or the second magnetic variation. Because the second magnetic variation, it means I have to take the first magnetic variation, which is given right here. 80 degrees, 45 minutes. 80 degrees, 45 minutes. Then I have to plus with this product right here, which is this one. So right here, 80 degrees, 45 minutes plus this one. 41. No, no, no. Zero, zero seconds plus this one. 41 minutes, 41 what? Second. So if you add right here, you get 41 seconds. This one plus this one, 86 minutes. 86 minutes, it means I'll take 60 minutes, which is equal to one degree. Then I'll, I'll, I will go with what? 26 minutes. Then I, this one will be equal to 81 degree. Why? Because I have taken, <coughs> I mean, this one plus this one is equal to 86. So in 86 minutes, it means we have, we have one degree, which is equal to 60 minutes, and 26 what? Minutes. If you add this one plus this one, you get this one. So I write 26, then I go with what? With one degree there. It means this is 80 plus one degree is equal to 81. So by concluding, it means the magnetic, the second magnetic variation is equal to 81 degree, 26 minute, 41 what? second. So let's see how are we going to find the magnetic bearing because right now we have the magnetic variation and we have the product of change in time and change in annual. Because right now we have the product of change in time and change in annual, it is easy to find the second magnetic bearings from the formula, from the formula. So because we have the, <coughs> the product of change in time and change in annual, it means it can be easy to find the value of magnetic bearing, the second magnetic bearing asked by using the following formula. As I said, uh, the new magnetic bearing or the second magnetic bearing is equal to the first magnetic bearing plus, we are going to use plus because I have explained there, uh, change in time, change in what? In annual. We have this one, this value, the value of the change in time and change in annual is equal to 41 minutes, 41 what? Seconds. It means we have to plus with the first magnetic bearings given. So the second magnetic bearing is equal to the first one, which is, uh, it is given there, is equal to how much? Uh, it is given as 100 degree, 15 minutes and 20 seconds. So we have to add with this one. 41, is 41 seconds. So if you add it, it's equal to 60, 61 seconds. So it means you take one second, you go with 60, 60, um, 60 seconds, which is equal to one minute. So I write one, then I go six, six, 60 seconds. So 60 seconds is equal to one minute. Then 15 plus one minute is equal to 16 minutes, plus 41 minutes is equal to 57 minutes. Then 100 degrees. So the value of the magnetic, the second magnetic bearing is equal to 100 degree, 57 minutes, seconds. So this is how to calculate the <coughs> value of the magnetic variation, the second magnetic variation given, and the second uh, magnetic bearing given. The question is very simple, as you can see, but it's a competent question because it's not direct. You have to understand some of the concept. Why, I mean, how and why are we either plus or minus when you reach this point? And the second point or the competent point is how are you going to find the product of this one times this one? Thank you very much. Okay, hello student, welcome back. Uh, we have received some of the questions from some of the students from different areas. Uh, so I'm going to, because of the time uh, remaining, then I'm going to answer a few questions. Okay, let's see one of the questions uh, where the Juma, uh, Juma from, it is Juma, Juma from, from Moshi. 
he asked the following question and uh, we have tried to display it on the screen so that everybody can be able to see it so let's see the question from Yuma uh -huh. uh, the question say showing clearly the procedure measure the bearing of point A which is in greedy reference so we we have the greedy reference there uh, from point B uh, which is in greedy reference this one and identify which point is forward bearing and which point is backward bearing so <coughs> you have to stick there this is one among the competent question and it is very important you have to need to know the needs of the question the question right now need us to show showing the clearly procedure they need the procedure you see it does not need anything it needs the procedure the procedure of what measuring the bearing of point a which is in this grid from the point b which is in this grid reference and then you identify which point is forward bearing which point is what is back bearing so let me show the clear procedure on how to measure the bearing of point a from point b okay so from there the way to measure the bearing of point a from point b it means from these two waves right here we can be able to identify which forward bearing please understand me very clearly on this point from this point here measure the bearing of point a from point b right here we can be able to identify because the last uh, words right here it asks and identify which point is forward bearing and which point is back bearing can i explain a little bit right here so that you can be able to understand it uh, in topograph map interpretation in topograph map interpretation we use the word a measure the bearing of point a to b or a from b by using these uh, three, I mean two words, you can be able to identify which point is forward and which point is backward bearing. Then you will go to the question, it will be easier for you to understand which point is A, I mean is forward bearing and which point is, is back bearing. So if you are told of, or if you are given the question, says measure the bearing of point A, measure the bearing of point, point measure the bearing of point A to B, or measure the bearing of point A from B. So by starting with this one, measure the bearing of point A from, I mean to B, A to B, it means A is forward bearing, then B is back bearing. See? Why? Because A to B, you start to measure the bearing from A to B. So B is the second point uh, in reading the bearing. So this is our backward bearing then a from b it means a from b we start to measure the bearing from point b so point b is forward bearing this one is forward bearing and a from b so we start to measure the bearing from which point from b so b is forward bearing then a is back bearing i think we are clear right here so by referring to our question right here we can be able to answer the last question identify which point is forward and which point is backward bearing because they told us measure the bearing of point A from B. Which point B, right now, from the question, point B is forward bearing and point A is backward bearing. Okay? Then we go back, back, showing clearly the procedure. So we go, I mean, I'm going to illustrate some, I will show some of the procedure on how to, to, to measure the, the, the bearing of point A from point B. Okay? So the procedure. I'm going to see. To show the procedure the first procedure is you have to identify where is point a and where is point b on the map you have to identify so the procedure the procedures is the question asked is the procedure uh, the first procedure identify identify point a and point B. Normally on the map, that's the first procedure. The second procedure, join the two points by using the straight line. Join the two points by using the straight line. You see? The the third procedure, 
after joining the two points by using the straight line, you have to draw the, cardinal, the four cardinal points on each point. It means draw, or we say indicate the four cardinal points on each on each point. Thereafter, the last procedure is that you have to take your protector and measure point, I mean the bearing of point B and the bearing of point A. Then from there you can say uh, the position of point A from point B, it is this one. Okay. So the question is, I said it need us to do what? To show the clear procedure on how to measure the position, I mean the position of point A from point B by showing the procedure. So as I said, after drawing or indicating the four cardinal point on each point, you have to calculate. Calculate the bearing on each point. On each point by using the protector. You can use the pro you can use the protector to to measure the bearing of each point. So this is the need of the question. Is I uh, I've as answered the first I mean the last question. Which after that after the procedure you have to identify which point is forward bearing, which point is back bearing. So from there, <coughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for being with me from the start uh, to this end. Okay, dear student, uh, as, as we have seen the question from Yuma, uh, then from here we can conclude our lesson by summarizing some parts which we have passed or we have seen. We were talking about bearings. Please, you have to make sure you've understood this. Bearings, type of bearings, it's calculation. See, simple calculation. Then from there, we talked about magnetic bearing, magnetic variation, true bearing, and how to calculate them. And before this one, we have seen uh, lines, three lines, very important. Uh, uh, we have the, what, the true north, uh, the magnetic north, and the what, and the grid north. So you can take this as a summary. If you want to learn, I mean, or to study bearings, then you have to know what is bearing. It's type, simple calculation. Then you have to go to true north, magnetic north, and the grid north. Thereafter, you have to finish um, you are started by make sure you know what is magnetic bearing, magnetic variation, as well as what the true bearing. Because this is very important, as I said. And uh, thank you, dear student. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed le the lesson uh, of today about the bearings. Then see you the next time. Thank you very much. You're most welcome.